right, I'm going to show you a little bit of footage of the high water in the Atchafalaya uh, around Simsport and the control structures. The water is very high, not as high as it was in 2011, but it's pretty high um, and it's still rising. So I'll show you what it looks like. Chapalai is backing up from this way. It's overtaken. The big bend cut off, and if you can see how far back it's actually flooded all the way to Big Bend. But I haven't really got our spring melt yet, so we'll see. Alright, now this is the levee. So on top of the levee, the water's right up to it. Trailer that's under. The water is higher than the surrounding areas because that's down the levee. Water's up the levee. So when we're driving on the road, the water is higher than us. Fun stuff. All right, what we've got here is one of the control structures. There's actually several different control structures, um, and there's Water coming through this one. The other ones were really not very much open. This one's a little bit open and I can't really tell if it's just forcing its way through or if it's actually open. Uh, I guess it's somewhat open because there's a good bit of water coming through, but I'm gonna try to let you see. It's kind of hard to see, um, but it looks to me like there's actually a force pushing through the, the, the water. All right, you can tell that gate's closed. This gate looks like it's closed, but leaking, I don't know. Uh, those gates out there are definitely all bearing the brunt of the water. I would imagine the ones in the middle are probably somewhat open. I can't tell. It looks weird. They didn't look like this before. In 2011, when the uh, water was high, they opened the middle gates and so they were like genuinely open and you could tell they were open but I need to go on the other side and see how high the water is that's pushing on it. Kind of an unsettling place to be at the moment. I think I'll go on the other side. local cattle farmer that has cow right here on the control structure uh, right off the property and uh, he was telling me he didn't want to be filmed I asked him if he wanted to he said no um, but basically he was telling me how in 2011 when the last high water came they almost lost the whole four side of the structure he said that they were out here in the middle of the night with huge spotlights big army trucks dump trucks full of giant boulders he said like boulders that would just fill up the whole bed of the, the dump truck and they were dropping them behind the control structure to try to jam it so it wouldn't fall be pushed off of its foundation and he said they would just drop it in there and it would just disappear you couldn't even see where they went because it's just so deep and dug out right there um so it definitely doesn't look good. It's all leaky and it's scary. That's why I kind of had to come back from the, had to come back to the top. It's a little bit unsettling at the bottom when you're looking at a leaky wall and you know that the river is behind it and you're definitely underneath it. So came back up to the top, which was great because I got to talk to the guy that has cattle here and he was telling me about, you know, when they almost lost it in 2011. Um, but it's not good that they refuse to open the control structure. I mean the uh, Morganza Spillway. All right, this is the Morganza Spillway. I know it's hard to capture depth with the video cameras. Okay, huge reservoir. Now I'm going to show you how high it is on the other side in comparison. Now understand the size of these vehicles to give you a gauge on you know how tall this structure is compared to the amount of water that's on the other this side. This is the other side. It's all the way, the water is all the way pretty much to the road, shy of a few feet, not very much. And it is like that as far as the eye can see in 
both directions. All right, since the cattle farmer mentioned how we almost lost the structure in the high water in 2011, um, let me explain to you exactly what that means to lose the control structure. I'm gonna give you just a quick run through of the history of the Mississippi, the Atchafalaya, and the control structure uh, and why these floods are more dangerous than the people around them may actually realize. In the early 1900s, the Atchafalaya River, which is what you see behind me, this is literally my front yard. Uh, we live on the banks of the Atchafalaya River. This river only had about 5% of the uh, current flow of the water that comes down the Mississippi River. Um, in fact, the old people around here would tell you that there was a time where you could walk across this river on a board. It was that, that small. Now, there were several reasons for that. There was a log jam up near Shreveport that um, basically acted as a natural dam. Uh, and there were several floods over the century that began to change and shift the course of the Mississippi River to dump water into the Atchafalaya. By the 60s, about 30% of the water flow of the Mississippi River was coming down the Atchafalaya River and it had swollen to more or less its, its current size, a little smaller. Um, but the Corps of Engineers had determined that at the current rate that the Mississippi River was trying to shift courses and dump directly into the Atchafalaya because it's a straighter route to the ocean and it's steeper. Um, they said that by sometime between 1970 and 1980, the Mississippi River would completely shift course and dump directly into the Atchafalaya River and no longer pass by Baton Rouge or New Orleans. So in an effort to prevent this because that all of the oil industry and the shipping industry and the infrastructure was already built through the ports in New Orleans and through uh, industry in Baton Rouge and all of the people that had been settled around it, uh, millions of people would be in a very dire state if they lost the Mississippi River. They built the old river control structure to maintain the 30% flow. So they built these control structures to allow 70% of the water to continue to force it to go where they wanted it to go and to prevent it from coming down the Atchafalaya and they only allow 30% of the water flow to come down the Atchafalaya. They also use it as an overflow to prevent Baton Rouge and New Orleans from flooding. They just, they flood us here. They just flood areas around here. They have um, different gates that they use to control the water. So for a while it was uh, working where they could control it to make sure that the major population areas didn't get flooded, but they still got enough water to run the big container ships and maintain their population centers. Uh, there was a problem though. I can tell you exactly when the river would have turned without man's intervention. It would have turned in 1973. Because in 1973 there was a major flood and the flood was so bad that it actually cracked the newly built control structure and threatened to destroy it. So they built several more structures to help to alleviate the pressure. But had the structure not been there, I can rest assure you that's when the river would have made its turn and it would have wiped out Simsport and Melville and any really town or city that was along the Atchafalaya River at that time uh, because there's no way that they had the capacity to deal with the full brunt of the flow of the Mississippi River. So the structures were reinforced, they were built. There's actually several structures now, there's three or four different structures and then the Morganza Spillway is part of that whole system as well to keep the water in check, only there's a problem. The problem is, is that you're fighting the force of an entire river, one of the largest rivers in the world. Now understand that when the Atchafalaya, we're talking about, you know, early turn of the century was small enough to walk across on a board like a small bayou. Now it's one of the deepest rivers in the world because of the force of the water that's coming through it, cutting that canal. And so now we have an issue where the Mississippi is dumping silt on the outside of the control structures. So it's raising the riverbed and creating its own natural dam. The riverbed has raised 30 feet in the last uh, 10, 20 years, uh, probably 20 years at this point, so that it's actually causing itself to build a wall and pushing the pressure more against the control structures. They're fighting a losing battle. The Mississippi will end up at some point taking over the Atchafalaya. Um, now, according to the Corps of Engineers, they say we're just one major flood away from this happening. And they've even talked about allowing for 
a controlled release, a slow release, because of course that would be safer. At least you wouldn't get caught in a, a flash flood or raging torrent. Um, but they shot that down and that'll never happen because if they do a slow release, then they're going to have to deal with the lawsuits of all of the millions of people that are going to get flooded out, that are going to lose their homes, even though they would live because they would be slow enough for them to be able to move. Um, they would still lose property and home. And then the repercussions of it leaving, of the Mississippi leaving Baton Rouge and New Orleans would be millions of people without industry, without home and without drinking water. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so the lawsuits that would be involved would be catastrophic. They're never going to do that. So it's more likely to happen is that they fight it as long as they can until they lose the fight and then the structures break. Uh, but that's going to be a catastrophic event because when you get the full force of the Mississippi River, which is over a mile wide in some places, coming down the Atchafalaya, which is a huge river by most standards, but not anywhere near the size of the Mississippi. In fact, it's only one third. In fact, it would triple the size of the Atchafalaya in an instant. So um, that would be catastrophic flooding. And what you would see in an event like that would not be a, uh, a still water flood. It wouldn't be a standing water flood like you see on TV with people standing on their rooftops waiting to be rescued from still water. It would be a rushing torrent of the full force of the Mississippi running over whole towns and destroying homes and sweeping everything in its path away. It would be a very catastrophic event. That would just be the immediate result. Now, I've lived under the shadow of these structures my entire life, and I can assure you that most of the people that live in these areas have no idea of the fight that's being fought. In 73, they almost lost that fight, and in 2011, they almost lost it again. It's getting very, very weak because the pressure is pushing more and more on the structure because of the raising floor of the Mississippi River. It's going to turn at some point. So besides the immediate catastrophic flooding and loss of life and land that you would see from the dam breaking, the long-term effects would really be the major issue for the greater population and even the nation. Because when the river turns, what's gonna happen is the water level in the Mississippi down through Baton Rouge and the New Orleans area will drop so dramatically that not only will it not be able to support the uh, industry and the, the shipping and the major ships that come through with all their cargo and all of that, um, but it will actually drop below sea level so that salt water will rush back into that river basin, causing them to pollute, causing a pollution of all of the uh, drinking water. So for your major population centers uh, in that region of the country, they would lose any ability to stay where they are. You would be forced to have a mass migration. Uh, it just could not support the number of people that are there without any source of drinking water. Everything would be polluted with salt water. Um, so you would lose industry and then you would have a mass relocation issue at hand. You would have a huge humanitarian issue where people would not have food, they would not have water, and they we're talking about millions of people here. Now on the greater scale, it would disrupt the whole nation as a whole. In fact, research has showed that it would cost the nation about $14 billion a day indefinitely because of the loss in shipping. Uh, it would also disrupt the commerce that brings goods to stores. Uh, the nation would go into a very dire situation where they would not have access to much of the imports and the food sources that they depend on that are mostly transported up the Mississippi River and a lot of it comes in through the port of New Orleans which would no longer be accessible or usable. Now of course they would have to rebuild infrastructure along the uh, Chafalaya so this would be a rebuild process but in the meantime there would be major disruptions and expense and uh, possibly even famine in the nation because of the shifting of this river so all my friends and family everybody in the little local area you didn't know you were that important huh um, so definitely prayers are appreciated because these high waters that we've been getting they're a little unnormal but they've been coming uh, more and more regularly almost like you know labor pains they come more and more used to be very very rarely we would have these major floods and now it's coming every few years and now it's coming almost every year now uh, and it's putting a lot of stress on these structures so definitely be in prayer about that I'll put uh, an article in the comment section uh, of this video that gives you great detail uh, on all of the the scientific research involved in what would happen when the river turns Thank you.